Hello YouTube, how are you guys doing today? What's going on? Coming back at you. So in today's video, I have been getting a few requests, uh, people asking me about, okay, so you have now been in the truck camper for three years. How is it holding up for you? What kind of issues have you had? Interior, exterior, just all around overview. Could you, could you give me an overview of how the truck camper has been holding up? So I thought that that's a great question and I am going to be going into detail today answering that question for you. So I have been living in this truck camper now for three years. I bought it in September of 2014, officially moved into it and started living in it in October of 2014. And so up until now, I have also been in living in it outside in an exterior environment. I have not had it uh, under cover or anything like that. I have been living in a coastal climate here on the Oregon coast. So I thought I would just point out a, a few things with that. So, uh, you know, as far as maybe some of the, you know, the, the corrosion issues, maybe some of the rust issues or in, in some of those components and some of those parts. Um, I plan, I'm going to be talking about caulking, going to be talking about some maintenance issues. Hopefully you'll be able to come, a, come away from this video with uh, a few practical tips and some ideas that you could apply to your RV maintenance strategy. So without any more further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the exterior of the truck hamper. I'm just gonna kind of take this step uh, step by step here. Just kind of talk about uh, every each each side of it. And I thought I would go in and talk about uh, water leaks at all. Have there been any water leaks? Up here in this corner up here, uh, I had a small leak up here and it had leaked into the cabinets. It was a very small leak and luckily I had caught it before it got really worse and it was after a really, really heavy downpour. So this seam that goes all the way along here, this does require caulk on the upper and on the lower. And I know when I first bought the truck camper, I wasn't under the impression that this would require any caulk, but yes, it does. So all of these seams require caulk. I, I have caulked the exterior of this twice since I've owned it this last summer. I just went through and went through everything, every joint and inspected everything and caulked it, which is what I suggest you do to your RV, you know, especially along these windows and especially up here. You've, you've really got to get on a ladder and fully inspect everything. As far as up on the roof goes, I have waxed it. I've waxed the entire truck camper so you can see the the outside of it, how the water's beating up. Uh, all of these joints, seams around the vents, I have had to uh, I have had to paint some sealer on those. And also in the propane tank compartment along just outside of the door, I've also had to apply some caulk in that area as well. Did do a little bit of extra caulking here around this seam in the refrigerator area. Um, I was having a, a, it was a, a few open gaps that needed to be sealed. So I took some of that 3M sealant and just put it in here to waterproof it better. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys here a few of the products that I use to maintain the outside of the camper. So the first one is Goof Off. I use this to remove any kind of decals or adhesive. It works awesome. Just be careful not to use too much and definitely read the, read the instructions on the back. Uh, second thing is some mineral spirits. This is the go-to cleaner for everything. Really good to have when you're caulking. As far as the caulk goes, the stuff that I've liked, I've tried a few out. This is my favorite. It's 3M UV 4000. It's not permanent. It can be removed. It has this thread on removable caulk tip that you can use. It works great. It, it goes on, it, it, the finish is very tacky. It doesn't, uh, when, it, it, when it dries, it's very tacky. It doesn't flake off, it doesn't rub off. It's really, really good quality stuff. So I, I highly recommend it. 
Uh, let's see, what else we have? We've got a plastic scraper. Uh, these work really good for just removing old caulk, I have found. Those plastic scrapers are great. Uh, here's just some rubbing compound that you can do when you're waxing the, uh, the exterior. This is the stuff I use, Starbright Marine Polish with PTEF. Really good stuff. I put about once a year coat on. And lastly, a good caulk gun. Uh, find yourself a caulk gun that you like to use. And you've got to really get good at caulking. So caulking is really important uh, you know, when you, when you have your RV. So get the right stuff. So over here at one of the rear jacks, you can see there's a little bit of rust going on, with some rust, a little bit of rust and corrosion going on that I've had some issues with. Over the past couple years, I've painted the foot pads and I think I'm going to probably be painting painting more of the jack space to cover up some of that rust. I know that the manual says to wax the wax the inside of the of the jacks up, but that is one issue that I do have to routinely maintain every year. Uh, put some paint, sand that down, and repaint them. Um, as far as some of the fasteners go, you know, a little bit of rust here on some of the fasteners. This, I could change out these washers to like stainless steel. I really, that's really the only rusting that I have is just on some of the jacks right here. A little bit of rust here, but these jacks are powder coated. This particular jack here, I have had some issues with this actuating, blowing with blowing fuses. I only have issues with this jack and I've had to take it apart a couple of times it's a matter of I don't know if I've done a video on it yet but you remove these two screws and then this whole assembly slides slides out and this cover comes off and then some of the gears they get a little bit uh, not totally seized but a little wound up so they won't move so I've had to like unseize them with taking a rag and just basically turning by hand or maybe a pair of channel locks to uh, loosen it up so I don't know what the deal is I don't know if it's just a a faulty part and it just needs to be replaced or what but this is the only one that I've had an issue with so and I know that they do say on these jacks I've I'm, I have the 4560 model they do say that you should run them periodically like once every six months you know run them all the way up run them all the way down but that is one issue that i have had uh, let's see one other thing i can talk about the rear door i have had to do a little bit of modification to the rear door to get things to fit the door at, at times has been riding on the metal when i close the door i've had to grind a little bit of metal there and also up here I've had to I've had to grind a little bit to get the door to fit uh, to close properly so that's you know kind of one issue and a lot of that has to do with sometimes how level the camper is in the rear uh, I do have this up on jacks right now and I have it uh, completely level um, as far as on the underbelly goes, I know I did, you know, post a video, I did install these, these uh, diamond plate skins on the outside. It's a really tight squeeze between the wheel wells and the camper. So as you can see, there's a little bit of, you know, wear marks right there. But if I didn't have this on here, you know, it would be, it could potentially be wearing on the fiberglass, which is not good. So if you are... You know at least a northern light truck camper you're probably going to want to do something here does it have to be aluminum skins no it could be anything it could be wood it could be any type of material i chose aluminum because i didn't want to uh, deal with any rusting or corrosion or anything like that you know just sometimes you get a little bit of uh, marks like this which you know these could be buffed out with a little bit of rubbing compound on the outside um yeah, if you look close yeah just just a little bit of surface rust here generator has worked out really good haven't had any any issues with the generator at all it it starts up when i need to this is a an lp generator runs on uh, runs on propane you can also start it here from the outside this area does collect a lot of dust so when i go down south for the winter in the era in the desert i usually have to come back and blow this out and blow the air filter out 
uh, do some maintenance in here. But no, this has been uh, been really been really good. You know, the the generator is this this particular generator. It's it's really something instant on demand. It doesn't you know idle low. It it it, it runs fully spooled out. So it's great for those times when you need instant power on demand you know with the with the power push of a button but for everything else a i find a actually a small portable honda generator a yamaha generator one of those type that can run uh they have the idle feature they can run just at idle i find that actually to be optimum for you know longer term boondocking type camping but uh, when you need when you need power, it's it's great. It works very very good. Down here is the basement. As far as the basement goes, it's been great. Haven't had any issues. Haven't had any any leaks at all. There are sometimes these doors that open these gaskets. You have to be a little bit careful when you open them, and especially after you wash the camper. It's always a good idea to open these and check for any water that could could possibly come in. I mean, these aren't totally the best seals in the world i mean if you to put direct water in there there's a high probability that you'll get maybe a, maybe a little bit inside but um other than that the the uh the basement has been been dry um i haven't had any issues with you know rodents or anything like that um rodents or insects you know getting in getting inside it's been been completely completely dry and that's one of the nice things about these type of uh, truck campers that with the the belly is completely sealed and there's just nowhere for you know moisture to to get in the only way they can get in is you know from these openings here in the doors and so forth and that's why it's so important to caulk everything but yep yeah, that's pretty much uh, what's going on with the base the front decal it had a, a decal underneath here I did go I did remove it it was it was becoming really faded just like the Northern Light decal, it's becoming faded. I decided to just leave that on for now, but I did remove this other one uh, with some goof off, a razor blade, and a little bit of a heat gun, and and it did seem to, to take it off okay. But I did remove remove the, the decal. All the other decals are holding up really good, but all I, all I can think of is just this as direct sunlight, you know, with the sun, and just going down the road, uh, all of the, the uh, the bugs and you know just all of the the weather the skylight has been awesome i haven't had any issues with that at all uh, there really isn't any caulking to do around this skylight and the windows have been fantastic they as i'm showing you here they open and close really easy they have a few different settings you can open them all the way i think they have about three different settings they also have a a little ventilation feature where they they're just opened up just a little bit but no leaks or anything uh, they're they're great they're very very durable you just have to uh you know they do scratch uh, kind of easily you know rubbing up against branches and so forth so you have to be careful about that so i really think that's about all other than some maintenance maintenance some regular you know maintenance issues and just you know some of the surface rust that i sh that i shown on a few of the on a few of the jacks uh, other than that i really haven't had any issues with with anything at all uh as far as uh the with uh, as far as the systems go i haven't had a failure with any any of the systems any of the plumbing systems any of the electrical systems at all knock on fiberglass <laughs> um other than that it's been really good other than just you know a few of my my own mistakes in learning how to use things in the camper and maintain things i've had you know a few little mistakes with some things that um you know i've had to fix myself but you know little just little little minor things um, other than that it's been it's been a very a very solid unit and I, like i said i just haven't had any issues to, to deal with this has been a a great uh, a great model it doesn't mean that you know if you go buy a northern light you, you know it's going to be perfect you, know, you might might have an issue you know keep that in mind uh, but other than that I, I have been very 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 happy with it and 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 I know you know northern lights they they have a, a very good uh, reputation you know from from their owners um, if you look for used ones for sale in the market, you don't find a lot of them for sale. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. You know, that either means that people, you know, they, 
they either you know they're not buying and selling them all the time like uh, like other other campers or RVs. Um, but other than the, other than that, those really in in the three years that I have owned it, that's really 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 the really all the issues, guys. So if you have some other questions, please comment below, and I will answer them on the next video. We'll talk to you guys later. Have an awesome day.